Thank you, Father, for teaching mercy. Thank you, God, you kept us all day long. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the fine protection and covering of your blood of the Son of Jesus. Now, Father, we pray to you as we get into your word. We pray that you will speak to us, God, tonight in clear and concise Yes, yes, yes. Spirit God, tonight we release your presence and power and glory in this place. Be glorified tonight. All we say and do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We pray that you all have a great day today. Yes. If you're getting glory to God, let's get ready to get better. Amen. 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 We pray to you and your faith be stretched tonight as a result of the word. All right. We're going to bring up uh, Elder Green tonight. Now we 
it was she was her soul was her, her spirit was broken because she had lost her husband. Mm, all right. And she she just didn't she, her spirit just wasn't lifted. She had a, a, a low spirit. Mm -hmm. But Ruth stuck in there with her. Yes, yeah, she. She right. petitioned Ruth and tried to get Ruth to leave, but Ruth didn't want to leave. Ruth Ruth decided to stick with mom in law. Yes, yeah, she stick with her. So she went on back, to come back to Judah, Israel, and to to where Naomi had relatives, had family. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the way it turned out, when the way it is now, we have welfare. Mm -hmm. Back then, in the early days, they had welfare. Uh, where they right. in the field. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. They
can't let nobody see us <laughs> like this together. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, you pull up your, pull up your cloak. And then he gave us some weed and barley to take back home to mom in law. Mm -hmm. And she was able to make her exit before daylight came. All so right. nobody was able to see her. All right. All right. <laughs> okay? See that the two of those had, you know, had been together. So then, come to find out, Boaz desired to have Ruth and take care of her as a companion. Amen. But just so turned out, a kinsman was in line before Boaz. Amen. Right. Amen. So the kinsman, he desired and he said, Boaz called his kinsmen together and told his kinsmen, hey, there's a partial of land that's available mm -hmm. from Elimelech's wife and, and his um, daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. He said, you should go ahead and purchase this land so you can continue the inheritance of the family. Mm -hmm. But the kinsman said, no, I already have a family. Mm -hmm. I already have siblings to continue my inheritance. Mm -hmm. So I can't do it, so I'll allow you to do it. All right. So this is what desire, this is what Boaz desired. Mm -hmm. So Boaz, he, he spoke to his kinsmen and he asked um, the, the brother and, the, and, the, and there was um, friends of theirs to come as witnesses mm -hmm. that he would buy this partial land from his kinsmen. Mm -hmm. And the way they did it back in those days, they would take their shoe off, give it to their brother. Mm -hmm. Brother, take like uh, part of some land from Pastor Sergeant.
you have to do is accept yourself. Amen. 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 So, this is what I have to say on the subject. Mm -hmm. You all pray for me. Amen.
How many of y'all know that it's a bad thing when you when, when someone wants to kill you and you know that? Right. And it's, it's worse when someone who's supposed to be loving you is out to kill you. Come on, anybody ever had some attack from his from the inside? Oh yeah. Here it is. David here is running from his father-in-law who is out to kill him. Why? Because not because of what he did wrong, but out of mere jealousy. How many folks with jealousy, man, will wear you out? I'm telling you, jealousy will make folks think about you that, I mean, whatever they can do to tear you down. And so David here now is running, and David is running for his life because uh, Saul wants to kill him because he's jealous because David was a was more successful in his, in his war tactics. David was more successful at bringing down greater opponents. And the people had begun to celebrate David's victory, and Saul didn't like that they were saying his name, David's name, above his name. After all, he's the king. This is why you have to be careful when you, anytime folks start building you up, all right. there's going to always be somebody there to tear you down. All right. Don't ever forget that. Listen, I, I, I'm amazed by how folks sometimes uh, they they really want their names and likes. You no, know, want to be this big grandiose person. But the bigger you get in anything, the greater target you become. Amen. And folks are always trying to find ways to bring you down because you know if, if any of you all ever seen crabs in a barrel, mm -hmm. those crabs will crawl on top of each other and get all up to the top. And it's one somebody who will jump up there, pull him by his hand, and pull him right back down. But have you noticed it works the same way, you all? Amen. The higher you try to go, the anytime God wants to promote you, the enemy seems to always send somebody your way. You can even be in, in your own family. Get a promotion on your job. Somebody on the job will ask you, well, how did you get that promotion? What'd you do? You mean I couldn't just have worked hard and get promoted? But someone is always trying to find a way to to devalue what it is you're doing. And so, I'm sorry, what it is you have done. And so here David now is running for his life. And David said, watch this now. David said, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Okay. Here it is. It is in that dark place that David allowed the light of the Lord to shine on him while he was physically in a dark place. Now, Pastor, what do you mean in a dark place? He was in a dark place emotionally, a dark place mentally, and a dark place physically. Okay. Pastor, what you're saying? David here now is hiding out in one of the, the caves in the wilderness, and you know there is no light in a cave. All right. And David is running for his life, and David said, wait a minute, in the middle of my dark place, the Lord is my light. Now, here's something you all, we can all take from this. How do we respond when our lives appear to be in a dark place? Because all of us have a chance to, to respond from a position of darkness. Maybe you, don't, uh, you aren't in a cave, but if something is coming against your life and the enemy wants to cause you to be depressed over it, my question is, do you allow the depression to set in or how do you respond? Okay. Because it is not that you and I won't have trouble. The question becomes, how do we respond during times of trouble? Okay. Ella Green, this is important because if you and I don't respond properly in times of trouble, then trouble will get the advantage of us. Right. The Bible says, uh, the Romans say, in all things, we are more than conquerors. Yes. But it's possible to sit in the seat of a conqueror Yet you yourself not feel like a conqueror. Amen. This is how come you can't allow your feeling to dictate how you feel and how you see yourselves. Okay. Because I mean this, if you would see your life based on where it is right now, and maybe your life right now isn't where you think it should be, and maybe someone is doing better than you, and you're like, but dear God, I'm doing all I can. I'm right here. This person here living. Not even halfway saying they are here. And you can watch that the devil would take that and make you feel as though you are less than someone else. And if you and I don't have that right, we will allow that emotion.
emotion that put us into a dark place and we'll start doing what God has called us to do based on what God has done for somebody else. The Bible says that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But it also says it's the goodness of God that do what? Lead men to repentance. And so could it be that God is blessing them so that they can see how much he loves them by how much he blesses them? And so David said, the Lord is my light. Listen, you can be, have a light on the inside of you to shine so brightly that even if you are physically in a dark place, when you understand who God is, it can light up your whole day. Amen. Come on, has something ever happened to you, maybe at work, at home, or whatever, and it wasn't that you had a reason to be depressed, but because you thought on the thing of Jesus, that, that the person that wanted to come didn't have a chance to come. Now, it wasn't that it, it couldn't get there. It was there ready to take over you. But the choice really was yours. Right here you are, David had to make, to make a, a decision on what to do when his life got in trouble. Now, that's the same way all of us have to do, is to make a decision on what to do when trouble hit our life. But what, look at what he said. He said, here's my life and, watch this now, my salvation. Now, salvation here comes from the word soteria. But it means more than just being saved. Amen. David said, watch this now, the Lord or God is my deliverer. Yes. Come on class, say deliverer. deliverer. Now, you don't need a deliverer if you're already free. All right. All right. David said, I'm physically bound, but even though physically my mind and my body want to be bound in a dark place, God is the one, watch this now, who is able to rescue me. Okay. Now, question, is that the mindset that, that the mindset you take when life throws you something funny? If it doesn't, it should. Amen. Now, here's the hard part. Because all of us have this tendency that when life goes bad or something bad happens to us, we really want to kind of almost Kill him. And what's the 
this now, this is something for us to learn. Sometimes it's easier to walk away from your enemy. Then to stay there and keep fighting and watch this and do more damage and cause something to come against your life because you made your move too soon. Okay. David had several opportunities to kill Saul, but David wouldn't do it. Amen. Now I wonder how many of us can have a chance to, to, to really not necessarily physically kill a person, but to bring someone down. Mm -hmm. Especially when you know that they're doing things to bring you down. Mm -hmm. Let me see if, if I can say it like this. All of us know somebody's personal business. Now, what this, aren't you tempted sometimes that when somebody tells something about you and you know something about them, mm -hmm. the devil says, well, tell their stuff too. Mm -hmm. There was this preacher some years ago who, uh, who, who put this other preacher on blast, on national television, I mean, put him on blast. Yeah. And then someone else knew his business. He said, well, if you know something about me, say it. And he said it. I mean, brought them in all the way down. Now, my point is this. Had he held his peace, all three men could have been saved. And the issue could have been squashed right there among the body of Christ. David now has to run from Saul because David don't want to kill him. Now, watch this. Yo, that's real love. That's right. That's what's this. That's real, that's real honor. That before I do something to you, I will get out of your way to make sure that you and I don't have to come in com uh, confrontation. As a matter of fact, this same one, uh, Saul, that David is now running from, when Saul died, guess who preached the funeral? David. David did the man's duty. Eulogy and David spoke nothing but well against the same man right here who, who, who he was running from. Amen. How many of you know that you, you, you gotta really, really love God for that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Really God. Now watch this. David says in the same verse, he says, Whom should I fear? Right here now, David has to realize that if God is on my side, there is no reason I have to ever fear for my life. Or from or fear anyone else. Okay. Now, Pastor, why is this important? Because we are living in an hour right now, y'all, where folk are just losing it. Amen. I mean, what was on the mind of those guys over there in Paris? Just for no reason at all, just uh, bombing stuff. But can you imagine hearing the devil telling you, don't go shopping? The store could be red. No one's doing movies. A bomb could go off. And now here you are, trapped in your house, and a prisoner in your own house, because the devil's telling you something might happen. Listen, if God can keep me in the house, he can keep me on the outside of the house. Are you hearing me? Now, I'm not saying live life recklessly, but I'm saying if you will allow fear to dominate your life, then you will find yourself being captive, held hostage in your own home. And no one should be held hostage and can't go in, can't go out, afraid to go to work, afraid to go to the store, afraid to go get some water, afraid to go on your own block. How many people know that, that, that that's real misery? God forbid, be afraid to come to church. Well, there's dangers outside. Maybe there's dangers in your house. Come on, somebody. And so you and I as believers, we have to have the mindset that no matter what the devil is plotting, I cannot afford to stop living my life because of what could happen. The Bible said that God, or in Timothy, that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love of a sound mind. Now, Pastor, why is that important? Again, you don't want your life tied down based on what could happen. Amen. Listen, if it had, fear is a down payment on something that has not manifested in your life. Can you imagine living your whole life on, 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 on what could happen? Listen, your life would be a, a, a wreck if you spent your whole life on living, living on what could happen. Are you hearing me? So David said, he's my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? Now watch this. The Lord in the strength of my life. David said, God is my sustainer. 
Come on, class, that he's my sustainer. That means God has, that means God is the one who can sustain you no matter what situation you find yourself in. Amen. Can you imagine having a job for 20, 30 years and all of a sudden he said, we land you off? Oh. Isn't it amazing how it looks like it almost happened as soon as you buy you a new car, a new house, get all your right. new husband and wife, all of a sudden, layoff. Mm. Well, listen, you can't be afraid of a layoff if God is truly our sustainer. Then who cares what they do if God is able to uh, provide for me and my job is to trust in him to some kind of way, make a way for me, even if the economy crashes completely. Okay. Are you hearing me? Amen. Well, listen, church for us should not be trying to find buildings to, to jump out of. Amen. Come on, for the believers, suicide should not be an option. Amen. Got all these bills, but I'm going to do it. And they'll say, kill yourself and get over with it. Oh, you'd be surprised some of the dumb stuff the devil tell church folk. It's like the, uh, uh, I can't figure out why this pastor about a, 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 a year ago, 15,000 members, blow his own brains out. Preacher. What was that bad? See, you don't know what the enemy is putting on folks' mind. What gives him strength is that you buy into what he's saying. The Bible says that you and I can cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. But if you and I allow the enemy to bring these thoughts into our minds and we don't hold those thoughts captive and cast those thoughts down, listen, this is one of the reasons why folk are always depressed. These thoughts come in their head and instead of casting those thoughts down, they begin to entertain those thoughts. The devil tells you you're not this and you go, I guess I'm not that. He tells you you won't get this. Well, I guess I won't get that. And now you're depressed over something, watch this, over something that hasn't even happened in your life. Right. And it's only because we have allowed the enemy to take our space in our minds. The Bible says to give no place to him. Right. Now, if God tells us to give no place to the devil, it would suggest to me that you and I have options. Amen. Come on, let's say I have options. I have options. Now, if you choose the option to give him the place, then you give him free reign in your mind, in your thinker, to do whatever, to make you think whatever he wants you to think. See now, when a pastor, I can't help but go on in my head. Oh, you can't help it. See, because a thought comes in your head, you're the one in responsible for allowing it to stay there and fester in your mind or casting that thought down. A pastor, it comes back. Well, if it keeps coming back, keep, watch this, Keep casting it down, but if that doesn't work, then start thinking of the thoughts. Let me see if I can say it like this. It's hard to think and talk at the same time. Amen. Right. Watch this. Uh, in your mind, everybody, count to ten. Ready? Go. Stop. Say your name. Now watch this. When you said your name out loud, it cut that thought off. Well, watch this. When the enemy comes with thoughts in your mind, if you will open your mouth and say something based on the word of God and don't let a thought that's living in your head, you will cut that thought off. Okay. Are you hearing me? What causes us to remain in fear is that we don't cut the thought off and now this thought leads to this thought. Right. And this thought leads to this thought. And now you look up, you're depressed or full of fear over, over something that hasn't happened. Right. But the enemy has bombarded your mind with these thought processes that cause fear to come in your heart. Mm -hmm. See, this is where anxiety comes from. Amen. <coughs> afraid of what could happen. Mm -hmm. Folks can't fly airplanes, but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to fall out of the sky. Mm -hmm. If it ain't fell on you all these years, it ain't fell. It might blow up. <laughs> it didn't blow up on you last time you flew it. Are you following me? See, if you have these thoughts in your mind, the devil would take you and almost mess your life up because you won't cast these thoughts down. Right. David said, whom should I fear? He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom or what should I be afraid of? Right. Now understand, 
It was not unlike you know, that David didn't have a chance to be afraid. Now, I, I don't believe that David went, went around trying to find things to, to hurt his life. But what this, when David had a confidence that was so strong in God, that when things came against him, he knew how to respond based on information God would give him. Right. Let me see if, if, if I can say it like this. When David fought, fought the bear, there was no books out on how to kill a bear. Now come on, you know, if, if, if David was six feet, most bears are seven, eight feet tall. There is no manual on killing bears. All right, all right. But God showed the boy how, how to kill a bear with his bare hands. How about, how about the lion? Here is the king of the jungle. The one, the one cat every cat is afraid of. Mm -hmm. There was no manual on how to kill lions. All right, all right. But watch this. When it came against David, David had the wherewithal to see God and understand that, that if I want to kill it, I got to do it, and God's going to help me do it. Amen. And so, Pastor, how did that affect me? When something comes against your life, your job is to ask God, God, how should I respond to this particular thing in my life? All right, all right. Because when I respond to it based on God's instructions, I guarantee victory. Mm -hmm. If I respond to it in my flesh, I may win, I may lose. Right. And here we tell God, God does not desire us to win a few, lose a few. Mm -hmm. If you are more than a conqueror than you are, that means you always win. All right. Are you following me? David said, of whom should I feel? Watch this. In verse 2, he said, win the wicked. Mm -hmm. Now, who are the wicked? Those ungodly folk. Mm -hmm. Those who don't, have, who don't hold God in high esteem. Mm -hmm. Those who, 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 who plot mischief against your life. David said, when the wicked and my enemies come against me to eat my flesh, watch this, he says, they're the ones that stumble and fall. Amen. Now listen, uh, that's a powerful, powerful promise of God for the believer. Amen. All right, all right. I believe it is over in Psalm 91, he said, a thousand shall fall at that side. Ten thousand at the right hand. All right. And none shall come nigh you. Which means, watch this, I'm protected no matter which way my enemy comes. Right. Okay. This, way, this is the reason you and I never have to be in fear over, about what folks do or say concerning your life. Right. And watch this, right. their word don't govern your life. That's right. That's right. Can you imagine if you really believe that? When folks talk about you, you really might about to respond. Right. Consider this, you know, if Somebody called you a dog. Well, you know you're not a dog. All right, all right. Why should I get Why should I get offended? Who you call a dog? I know well off who I am. Mm -hmm. Watch this. You call me anything outside of who I am. Watch this. You only respond if you think you're what, what they call you. All right, all right. You can go outside and call me Frank all day long. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Frank. Oh, Frank. I can't even look look at you. Right. You know what? My name is my friend. Okay. Right. Amen. Amen. Which means if someone calls you anything outside of what or who you are, you don't have to respond. Mm -hmm. Now it works the same way spiritually. Your your outward man may be saying one thing, but if you don't answer to it, you can reject that. All right. All right. Like poverty. Your pockets may say you broke, but I don't accept poverty. All right. All right. You know why? Because God said, but the, the word said, he was made poor, that through him I could become rich. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if he became poor so that I could become rich, it means that God want me to have more than enough. All right. All All right. right. And so if I don't have it right now, it don't mean it's not, it, it, I have it somewhere, mm -hmm. but it's waiting on me to go and possess it. All right. I'm your father. Right, Somebody say possess it. Possess and so he says, when the wicked, even my enemies. Now y'all, this here are two sets of people. It's one thing to be around crazy folk. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when your enemy hook up with the crazy person too? Alright, alright. Y'all see right in the text, he says, when the wicked, that's the crazy folk. He said, even my enemies. Wait a minute, y'all. It's my fault. Even my foes. Amen. In other words, he said, it's coming from all directions. All right. All right. Now, God here gives the guarantee. David, you all, 
minute, you may come, but you're the one that's going to fall. Now, for the believer, this is our resolve. And it's not that the enemy isn't going to show up in your life. But you must understand where you stand with God. Now, if the God is in you and He is, if He is greater than your adversary, then you must want this to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? right? Now, watch this. We have, uh, verse 3. He says, Though the host, watch this now, should encamp against me. He said, In my heart, I'm good. I'm good. He said, I can be surrounded. Now, some of God's folk, y'all, they scared of one person. All right. David said, there can be a bunch of them. He said, I ain't going to freak out. Now, what question, what gives the believer peace in his heart? Because, notice when I say your heart, not your head. Because you know sometimes your head can freak out. But what gives a, 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 a child of God peace in his heart when there is reason to trip? Right. Watch this. What gives you peace is knowing mm -hmm. that God will fight for me. Mm -hmm. All right. It's knowing that he will fight for me. Yeah. Now listen, you will have the opportunity to fight for yourself. The question is, will you stand still long enough to allow God to fight for you? Because right. you know, it is our natural response to, to, to take matters into our own hands. All right. All I'm right. sorry. Y'all, me, Amen. it's my response. All right. All right. Naturally, to take matters into my own hands. Amen. They come against me, my flesh wants to defend me. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. But David says, my heart is so confident in God. That yes, you're coming. I see you coming. I know what you want to do to me, but I ain't afraid. All yeah. right, all right. I'm not afraid. Because when I understand who God is to me, child of God, when you and I understand who God is to us mm -hmm. and in us, listen, my enemy can't defeat this. Even if I go down, it's because God, God allowed it. All right, yeah. all right. Are you hearing me? If I go down, I'm not. But if I do, God allow me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right? David said, when they came upon me to give up us, they still would have failed. Though a host should come against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. Now, watch this. What is he confident in? Verse 4. He says, one thing have I the life of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life Amen. to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in the temple. Watch this. It looks like to me that David had a one track mind. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. David says, Yes, I know what's going on out here, but I am so locked into God that what's out here does not affect me. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been thinking about something so hard? Let's see, I can say it this way. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody? But your mind was someplace else? Yes. And even right. though they were talking, you heard nothing they said? All right. Come on, you're been on the phone, and a person talking, you feel, mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. And then they ask you a question, you go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they said, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even, just know what you, you go, uh. <laughs> you know what? Because really your mind is someplace else. Oh, yeah. right. watch this. Right. That's the same way you all we can do when the enemy comes against us. Mm -hmm. It is not that our lives won't have trouble come against it. But if I'm so tuned into God, I can be in the middle of trouble and be so locked into Him that what's going on against me don't affect me. All right. All right. Let me all see. Right. You would call shit like me, Shaq? In a bed to go? The Bible said that, that, that they were throwing into the furnace. Now watch this. I don't think that they were getting out screaming the whole time, oh, get me out of here. Not at all. That's how you know. Because they said, oh, king, our God is well able to deliver us. All right. All right. They went into a burning inferno knowing that God would get them out of the inferno. All right. Now, can I just be, be transparent? If I'm going to the fire. I'm going to be hollering, taking girls now. I'm going to be screaming. I'm going to 
dog be, be, be kicking and scratching. I'm biting somebody. <laughs> I'm going in, but first, I'm dragging somebody with me. So I, it is what it is. But these fellas were able to be thrown into the fight. Nowhere in the tech that I see where they were hollering and screaming. But in their heart, they were, they were resolved that God has got me even if I go on it. Right, now, it's almost as if, well, if I die, I just go. Mm -hmm. But I'm so confident that God's going to get me out of it and watch this death is nowhere in the picture. All right, all right. Are you hearing? Amen. This is a resolve that David had, you all. Death was nowhere in the picture. Mm -hmm. He understood that, understood that God would keep him and hide him even in the midst of an unfair situation. He said, in verse 5, he said, for in the time of trouble, watch this now, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Now, a pavilion is a cave. David said that God had a cave somewhere. In his presence, that even in trouble, I can hide in God. Mm -hmm. Which means, to my God, that there's a place you and I can get in God that even the devil can't touch us. Amen. All right, all right. Are you hearing me? Amen. This is what I was saying on uh, last Sunday. Most of us never even purposely get in that position mm -hmm. because the enemy keeps us so overwhelmed with our current situation that we felt uh, we, we missed out on the opportunity to have God put us in a place where the enemy can't get to us. All right, all right. Now, I will say this. Some things you must grow into, and that's one of them. All right. I'll say it again. You must grow into that. But now, watch this now. You only get there through experience. All right, all right. That's what kind of experiences. Your experiences with trouble. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you, truth of God, there is something about getting in God's presence when you have a real reason to cry. Come on, anybody ever had something hit your leg and you and you were just like, I mean, just crying, just crying your eyes out? All of us have. But why not take that energy and channel it in the right direction? All right, all right. And then follow me. Because if you don't take the same energy, shoot it in the right direction, yes, my body may physically be in the same position. But I can be someone else emotionally and mentally. All right, all right. Yes. And so you you have been, <laughs> been around somebody who who just kind of spaced out. Mm -hmm. You'd be almost in their face and they go. Right, Let's see, right. one writer said, Your body is giving me, mm -hmm. but your mind is somewhere else. <laughs> David said, You you have see, this is a this is why, why Pete, having God's peace in you is so good. Because you may be, 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 be attacking my body, but you can't trap my mind. All right, all right. Because I can take me anywhere I want to go. Amen. This is why every time Lady Karen said, let's go on a cruise. Okay, come on, sit down. Sit down on the couch. Close your eyes. Where you at? That's the much you say. Then you say it, Doug. I can go on a cruise and come back the same day, bro. <laughs> Glory to God. I can be in the Bahamas. <laughs> yes, Lord. And back in two hours. <laughs> and so, <laughs> see, you are the one responsible for, for, for where the enemy takes your mind. Mm -hmm. Hear me tell me that the, the enemy is after your mind. Yes. Because he understands that, that, that your mind is what governs your body. All right, that's right. Are you hearing me? Your mind governs your body. Your mind governs your emotions. Your mind governs what you do. And so if your mind is, is, is thinking right, your mind, your body will go right if your mind is thinking right. But if, if any has your mind tied up, he has your body tied up. All right, all right. And so David said, this boy says, when I'm in trouble, when I'm in trouble he said, God's going to hide me. Now watch this. Here's the challenge. If you don't look for the hiding place, you won't find it. All right. All right. All right. All right. Are you hearing me? If you don't look for the hiding place, you won't find it. Now, here's how you find it. When 
the trouble comes, start looking for something. Start taking your mind into the presence of God. Begin to begin to to to, to meditate on God's word. Yes. It's like, okay, when your body is hurting and aching. And you know we have the tendency that when our body is aching, not only do we say how bad it hurt, we identify the, the, the ah. Come on. We all do it. Oh man. Oh, this this old knee. I think you were 22 years old. This old knee. Really? Give it a hand. 